Good morning, grade nines. So now what's going to happen is we're going to go to the next step on our inequalities and learn how to solve them. But we're going to split it up into adding and subtracting first, and then in the next lesson we'll do multiplying and dividing. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at this pan balance right here. And you should notice pretty straightforward that it's not balanced, right? There's four on the right, and there's none on the left, so it would tip as, you know, as shown here. Now, this is what's called an inequality because they're not equal. Right. Now, what happens if I add 3 to both sides? If I put 3 here, adding 3, and I put 3, adding 3, we should notice that nothing changes. It's still unbalanced because we did the same thing to both sides. Right? The right side is still heavier than the left side. So by adding 3 to both sides, nothing has changed here. Okay, what if we do subtraction? What if I take away 2 and take away 2? Has it changed? No. I still have the same situation. I've got the right side, which is heavier than the left side. So if we add or we subtract the same thing to an inequality, nothing changes. And that's our rule. We have to do the same thing to both sides when you have an inequality. You can't only do it to one side. So here's, here's our basic rule here. As long as you add or subtract the same amount from each side, the equation, or in this case, the inequality, doesn't change. So if we had to do this in symbolic form, it's actually very straightforward. You do the exact same thing as if there was an equal sign there. Like, for example, here's the inequality. I've got x plus 3 equals 12, and over here I've got x plus 3 is less than or equal to 12. So to get rid of the 3, I'm going to take 3 from both sides. Now, to get rid of this 3, I take 3 from both sides. Now, a positive 3 and a negative 3 gives me 0. And then the same thing over here. A positive 3 and a negative 3 gives me 0. Cleaning it up, I get x is 9 over on the left-hand side. From the right-hand side, I get x is less than 9. Right? So if you notice, the steps are all the same. Nothing's changed. Right? Now, well, this works for adding and subtracting. OK, let's take a look at verifying an equation. In this case, we know uh, in, in an equation, we know there's only one solution. And this is x is 9. We know that because we solved it. So in order to find out whether 9 is the correct answer, we do our verifying. Now verifying is quite straightforward. To take our equation, x plus 3 is 12. This is what we started with. We said that x was 9. So take out the x and put 9 in its place. 9 plus 3 is 12, so we know that for the equation x plus 3 is equal to 12, 9 is correct because 12 balances with 12. Now when we take a look at an inequality, we have a difference here because no longer is one answer your only solution. Now we have a range. It says here that the solution x has to be greater than or equal to 9. So I have to choose a number which is greater than or equal to 9. I could have chosen 9, but I chose 10 this time. So is 10 greater than 9? Yep, so it's a good choice. So we now we just take the equation, and you put the 10 in. So 10 plus 3 is 13, so I now have 13 is greater than or less than to 12. So is it true? Is 13 greater than 12? The answer is yes. So in this case, does the inequality remain the same? Does the left side remain greater or equal to the right side? And the answer to that is, yes, it does. So I know that 10 is a solution. So you can check any value that's equal or greater to the 9, and the inequality will be true. But if you try a number less than 9, it will not be true, because the left side will then be lower than the right side. So is it possible to check every solution? Well, here's the problem with uh, inequalities. You, because the range usually includes going up to infinity, then it's not possible. There are an infinite amount of answers for inequality. So you have to choose one that is uh, usually, this is what I normally do, is I choose like 9, 1 greater, 10, and 1 less, and see if all three of those hold true. If they do, your answer is, is correct. So to solve an inequality, you add or subtract the same number to each side to get the unknown variable by itself. This is called isolating the variable. So going on, let's take and have you stop, or sorry, pause the recording, and I want you to do x minus 4 is less than 3. Okay.
I've got to get rid of a negative 4, which means I've got to put a positive 4 with both sides. There's my positive 4 on the left. A negative 4 and a positive 4 will form 0. And 3 plus 4 is 7. So I anyway, now have x minus 0 is 7, so x is less than 7. Okay, pause the recording and let's try this one. Now you can use your algebra, sorry, your, your, your uh, fraction calculator to help you out. So pause the recording and do this one. So 4 fifths is greater than negative 2 thirds plus b. So I've got to get rid of the negative 2 thirds. So to get rid of the negative 2 thirds, I've got to put it with a positive 2 thirds. A negative and a positive will form, will form 0. And 4 fifths plus 2 thirds is 1 and 7 fifteenths. So your answer, b, is less than 1 and 7 fifteenths. Okay? Pause the recording and do these two. All right. I've got to get rid of the negative 5.3, so to do that, I'm going to add 5.3 to both sides. The 5.3 negative and the 5.3 positive form 0, and negative 1.6 and 5.3 is 3.7, so my y is less than or equal to 3.7. On the one here, I've got y minus 5.3 is less than or equal to 1.6. We're going to verify this. So verifying, I'm going to choose a number which is less than 3.7. So I'm going to have to choose something less than 3.7. I'm going to try 3. So put the formula down, the equation. Take the y out. We said y is going to be 3. Put that in. Negative 2.3 less than or equal to 1.6. Is this true? Yeah, this, it is true because this is further to the left on the number line, which means it's less than 1.6. So is the statement true? Yes, it is. Okay, I want you to try this split variable one. Now remember, try to keep things positive, all right, by adding and subtracting. So do that, pause the recording and do that now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the 3x on the right-hand side. I chose the 3x because 4x take away 3x leaves me with a positive number. So 4x take away 3x is going to leave me with an x here. Neg so 3x minus 3x is going to leave me with a 0. So now I've got x minus 8 is greater than or equal to 0 plus 2 and now I've got to get rid of the negative 8. So you should have added 8 to both sides so this will, will form 0 and 2 plus 8 is 10. So our solution x is greater than or equal to 10. So now let's try to verify this alright. To do the verification on this one I want to try the numbers around 10. I'm going to try one less, one greater and one equal. So let's take a look at this one right here. My equation is there. I take the x out and put a 9 in this x, and I'll put a 9 in that x, both sides. Now I'm just going to solve these by multiplying and subtracting and multiplying and adding. 4 times 9 is 36, and 36 take away 8 is on the left, left here. 9 times 3 is 27, so I've got 27 plus 2. So 36 take away 8 is 28, and 29 is on the right. So 28 is greater than or equal to 29. So the question is, is it true? And the idea here is that we know it's not true. It shouldn't be true. Because our solution here has to be greater than or equal to 10. And we chose 9. So this one here should not work. And it doesn't, if you take a look there. Now let's try 10. Now x is greater than or equal to 10. So when we do 10, it should work. It should balance. So again... Take out and put your equation down. Take out the x, put the 10. Take out the x, put the 10. You end up with 40 take away 8 and 30 plus 2. That gives you 32 is greater than or equal to 32. So these two are equal and that's allowed because of that little bottom part right down there on the bottom. Right here, it's just a line there. Okay, now, should 11 work? Well, x has to be greater than 10 and 11 is greater than 10. So this one should work. So, again, put your formula down, put 11 into what you, you know, your, your x position, 44 and 33. Now, 44 take away 8 and 33 plus 2, and I get 36 is greater than or equal to 35. And 36 is greater than 35, so I know that this works. So, if I was solving this inequality, verifying is a lot more work. But if you do it correctly, you should be able to zone in on whether you are right or wrong. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. In his giant aquarium, Joel needs to keep a minimum of 174 liters of water. 
He currently has 135 liters of water in the aquarium. How much water can Joel put into the aquarium in order to keep his fish alive? So, well, we're going to be putting in liters, so I'm going to choose the variable L. Now, remember, he has to have a minimum of 174. It means I can't, I, I have to make sure that whatever happens, the 174 is the minimum. I've got to be above it, all right? So to do that, I'm going to take the, the uh, 135 that's in the tank, and I'm going to add liters to it, and I've got to make sure that I get above this 174 because the 174 has to be the minimum that's available, or that you can put in there. So whatever I add here, it's got to be bigger than 174. So 135 plus L is greater than or equal to 174. So what does this inequality represent? This is the minimum amount of water Joel must add to the tank to keep his fish alive. So now that we have this, we can move on to solving it. So I'd like you to solve this equation. So pause the recording and do that now. Okay, so copying down our equation. 135 plus L is greater than or equal to 174. I've got to get rid of the 135, so I'm going to subtract 135 from both sides. 135, subtract 135 is 0, and 174, take away 135 is 39. So the 0 goes away, leave me with L is greater than or equal to 39. So what this means is, Joel has to add a minimum of 39 liters there. He can add more, but he can't add less. Now, to graph this solution, I want you to take and, and do the graph on this. So, pause the recording and graph this on the number line. Okay, so setting up your numbers first. I'm working with 39, so I've got 38, 37, sorry, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. And now, it's going to be an open, uh, sorry, closed-in circle because L has to be included. So, I'm going to have a closed-in circle, and you have to add more than 39, so it should go up and to the right. Up and to the right. So there is the solution. Okay, if you have any problems, come and see me, watch it again, and we will see you in our next lesson.